Please have a seat, everybody. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Yesterday, I don't know, don't know if you've paid attention. It's not been in the news much, but there were some elections yesterday. <laughs> some of you may be upset about the results, but don't panic. Save your panic for climate change. <laughs> These were a handful of off-year elections around the country, but according to cable news, the most important election was Virginia, where the governor's race was won by Republican businessman and live-action Doug... <laughs> Glenn Youngkin. Not to be confused with the new hit CBS show, Young Glenkin. <laughs> A lot of factors go into every victory in every election, but I believe the deciding factor here was that Youngkin had the one quality that Virginia voters wanted most, not being Terry McAuliffe. <laughs> and it probably has nothing to do with the fact that Terry dances like this. 3.2 from the driveway of my house. Swept up. I got swept up. Thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, meanwhile, up in New Jersey, Democrat Phil Murphy was ahead eight points in the polls going into Election Day. But for most of the last 24 hours, the race has been too close to call. Of course, that's how New Yorkers have always viewed New Jersey. Way too close. <laughs> okay. So it was a disappointing night for Democrats, but Democrats are used to being disappointed. That's why they're changing their logo from the donkey to Eeyore. <laughs> but here's the thing. And I'm going to say the thing. Here's the thing. And maybe I'm alone, but I'm not that upset. Mm. I've already endured the worst election in American history, <laughs> live on TV, sitting over there, drinking a cocktail of bourbon in my own tears. <laughs> This one just seems like another election. Oh, no! Terry McAuliffe didn't win? Will the Republic survive our post-Terry future? <laughs> you see, both Virginia, both uh, Virginia and New Jersey have a historical pattern of electing governors in off-year elections who are from the opposite party of the sitting president. In Virginia, it's happened in 10 of the last 11 elections. It makes sense, because people tend to vote more when they're upset with the person in power. And right now, that person is Joe Biden. Voting is like democracy's Yelp review. <laughs> you never leave a comment when the soup was tasty. <laughs> but if you bring me still water when I ask for sparkling, I will burn your bistro to the ground. <laughs> then again, one star. Wish I could give it zero. How hard is it? Oh, man, you can't sparkling, hold... it's a party. You can't hold a grudge for that kind of stuff. Apparently, <laughs> independent and suburban voters moved Republican. In Virginia, education was the top issue, in part because many parents are still frustrated by the way public schools have handled the coronavirus pandemic, but also because claims about what's being taught in history classes have become the latest racist dog whistle. For instance, on Monday, Youngkin made this promise. Let me be clear, on day one, we will not have political agendas in the classroom, and I will ban critical race theory. Here's the thing. Critical race theory is not taught at the K-12 through level in Virginia. Wow, that was fast. Promises made, promises kept. Good for you, Governor Youngkin. He, he did it. He did it. It happened. It's pretty hard to campaign against someone who's promising to eliminate things that don't exist. <laughs> if elected, I will ban every toilet seat getting Americans pregnant. Say goodbye to your friends and neighbors exploding thanks to Pop Rocks and soda. And on day one, I will imprison that woman who put the turkey in the bassinet and the baby in the oven. We will also go after her accomplice, the Slender Man. The calls coming from inside the house from your Canadian girlfriend. The, the Democrat... The Democrats did win some races here in New York City. For mayor, voters overwhelmingly elected Brooklyn Borough President and man who got a great discount at Bracelets R Us, <laughs> Eric Adams. Adams was the heavy favorite, and it did not take long for him to be declared the winner. His victory was announced just 10 minutes after the polls closed. 
It would have been announced sooner, but the results got stuck behind a group of tourists in Times Square. <laughs> we get it. It's a big old Navy ad. Well, yes, it's video. It's moving. Could you move? <laughs> but there was just... <laughs> Here's some M&Ms. <laughs> and some shrimp. There was also a big victory in New York's Milwaukee, Boston, where voters elected Michelle Wu, who will be the city's first woman and person of color to become where, mayor. Yes. Woo! 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 Yes, it's an historic victory. Wu broke a 199-year streak of white male elected city leaders. Ooh, ooh. So close. Hey. So close. So close to 200. Boston was just one year away from its white male bicentennial. <laughs> now they'll have to cancel the parade. They already booked Jimmy Buffett <laughs> and ordered that giant balloon of cargo shorts. <laughs> uh, on Staten Island, the job of borough president went to Republican candidate Vito Fossella, seen here at his campaign stop next to a shallow grave. <laughs> now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Steve, we're New Yorkers. We don't care about Staten Island. <laughs> Fair enough. But you will care about this. Back in 2009, Fasella was forced to resign from his congressional seat after the public exposure of a secret second family in Virginia. <laughs> hey, before you judge, people make mistakes, and everyone deserves a second family. Chance. <laughs> Second chance. How did... It's a true story. Yeah, it's a true well, story. A second family. How did the public find out about his second family? It came out during a DUI arrest. How does that come out? No, officer. I'm not drunk. I'm just driving erratically because I'm in a hurry to see my secret second family. <laughs> did I say that out loud? Man, I am drunk. <laughs> Are you single? Third time's a charm. Now, <laughs> to top it off, Fasella originally rose to political prominence because he championed family values. Yes, it's true. He values family so much, he has two of them. <laughs> it's called diversifying your investments. Wow. The local... The local GOP has an interesting spin on this with former borough president James Molinaro saying... There's not a man alive that probably didn't have an affair while he was married or before he was married. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, don't drag the rest of us into this. <laughs> Come on, we're guys, right? We like three things. Football, beer, and having second families in other states that no one knows about till we drive after too much football and beer. <laughs> My kids will tell you the same thing. Not those, the other ones. <laughs> Speaking of people who should not have been elected, Colorado representative and restaurant hostess saying, welcome, where can I shoot you? <laughs> Lauren Boebert, congressional person Boebert, recently made this argument against paid family leave. Listen, I'm a mother of four. I delivered one of my children in the front seat of my truck because as a mom of four, we got things to do. Ain't nobody got time for two and a half months of maternity leave. You're talking like it's a vacation. <laughs> maternity leave is a critical time for healing, bonding, and I would hope deep cleaning that truck. <laughs> also... <laughs> also, why do you give birth in the front seat of a truck? You are in a vehicle that literally has a bed. <laughs> now, I will admit, I'll be the first to say that I have never pushed a human out of my body or had one cut out of my abdomen, but I know about newborns. They need time and care and someone to untangle their umbilical cord from the gear shift of the Silverado. <laughs> but Bobert is basically saying, I gave birth in a truck, so no one deserves parental leave. That's not an argument against leave, that's an argument against hospitals. <laughs> I gave birth in my truck for the same reason I got my son circumcised on an ATV, because ain't nobody got time for medical care. I took Lama's class at the Ford dealership and got my epidural from one of those inflatable dancing guys. <laughs> He missed and put the needle in my brain, which is why I'm this way. Play ball. We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Andy Cohen. But when we come back, 
has John F. Kennedy Jr. come back with a secret message for QAnon? The answer may surprise you if you're clinically insane.